Hey, it is Kenny from Kenny's Audio File Record Reviews. Thank you very much for you on my channel. Please like and subscribe. I sincerely appreciate that. In this video, I'm going to do a comparison of the, uh, the world-famous John Coltrane. I love Supreme album. I'm going to compare two analog sources, uh, two albums, and... Uh, four digital sources and see which one I think sounds best on my system. Now, um, we have to keep in mind that, you know, these things are, these comparisons are system dependent. You know, your system might reveal different nuances and uh, details of the music that my system just simply can't. So this is, was done with my ears on my system. Uh, and I, you know, did it the best way I know how. I give you a, a real brief um, uh, equipment a breakdown, then I'll get into the sources I'm comparing. I have a, a Riga P8 turntable and a FETA 3 cartridge. I have a WEST, that's W-H-E-S-T.20 phono stage. And um, on the digital side, I have a Sony XA9000 ES Super Audio CD player. Uh, a high res player, it's a Sony HAP Z1ES high res player. I have a DAC that's a, a DA converter, it's a um, Luxman DA06 DA converter. Now, I have to tell you that my SA CD player, although it has a digital out for CDs so I can uh, use the uh, the better DAC. I mean, the be better DAC in my D to A converter, because my DAC in my D to A converter is better than the DAC in my SA CD player, at least for playing CDs. There is no digital out for the SA CDs. So the, uh, the um, CDs will have the benefit of using the DAC, my uh, outboard DAC, where the SA CD will not. I just want to uh, make that uh, distinction. Um, I think a lot of uh, SACDs, I think at least older ones, may suffer for that, getting the output uh, to go to a, a DAC or uh, properly interface with a DAC. And mine doesn't, but it, I can listen to CDs through my DAC. I just want to make that distinction. But quickly, I'm going to go through the sources I'm, I'm using in this comparison. I'm going to start with the two records. This is a, a Analog Productions Acoustic Sounds UHQR 45 RPM record and according to uh, the acoustic sounds website this uh, record was cut from a um, a backup a tape copy that was used by Rudy van Gelder for uh, cutting records in the UK in 1965 as the uh, the original master tape is not in good shape to use for these type of uh, you know productions the uh, original master tape they say, is not in the best shape, so they used a, a copy that was used in the UK for cutting records by Rudy Van Gelder in 1965. Um, so that was uh, for the um, 45 RPM UHQR. And they, they say the same thing on the website for the 33 and a third. This is a 33 and a third from uh, Analog Productions. Um, I'm sorry. This is a 33 and a third from Analog Productions. Acoustic Sounds. Um, their acoustic sound series, a 33 and a third. And it sa says the same thing on the website that this also was cut using that uh, backup tape copy. Now, when I originally went to purchase it, uh, these, um, this record, the UHQR, that was a concern of mine. I'm using a backup tape uh, for this uh, UHQR, and we'll see uh, how that affects my decision on, on the sound of the UHQR. Um, my number on this one is. 704. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but it's actually 704. I don't think it's coming out in the video, but um, 704 out of 10,000. I got mine as of the taping of this video uh, last week as of the taping of this video. The other sources that I'm going to use, and again, the UHQR is 45 RPM, and the standard uh, LP is 33 and a third. Other sources I'm going to use are going to compare it with is this um, this is issue 1995 
it says here on MCA Records, actually, and um, it was produced by Michael uh, Cuscuna. Please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that name. In 1995, this is a standard CD, and this is a deluxe CD set, two CD set, and um, I'm using the um, the standard CD for this one. And this one was issued on Impulse Jazz. It was, I think, a part of uh, Verb Records at that time, the Verb Group at that time. This was issued in uh, 2002, along with the SACD, which was issued in 2002 on Impulse. And like I said, they were a uh, part of the Verb Music Group at that time. And also, I'm um, comparing a high-res uh, file in this comparison that I uh, downloaded from uh, HD Tracks. It's a 96 kilohertz, 24-bit file. I'm using that in this comparison. And I'm going to start with, with the one that I think I'm going to go from my least favorite to my favorite. And my least favorite is this one that was issued in 1995. And it says here on MCA, um, MCA Records. This is the CD. Now, what I dislike about this CD is it's not as detailed as the uh, the ones I'm going to uh, present uh, as we go along on this video. It's not as detailed. And I noticed the drum set, um, the drum set, you know, Elvin Jones, the drum set on the LPs and the, uh, the other CDs, the drum set is more towards the, mainly towards the right speaker. In this CD, what they do is, it seems like the sound of the drum set, El Elvin Jones's drums, is moved to the the left of the right speaker, and it's is is literally it, it gives the illusion that it's coming from my equipment's on. For those of you who see my um, system uh, tour, my music room tour, I have a a, a cabinet with all my equipment in it. And the sound of the drum sounds like it's coming from the wall in back of the cabinet. Now, that's an awesome effect. It really is. But um, but the thing is, in the process, it took a lot of detail. You can't discern the detail of the drums on this particular CD. You just simply can't. It's not, it's not as dimensional and detailed as the ones I'm going, detail as the ones I'm going to present uh, later on in this video. But like I said, the, it's very interesting here, the drums literally seems like they're coming from it has this awesome effect as if they're coming from in back of the speakers inside the right speaker from the wall and it's an awesome effect but the detail is gone the detail of the bass the detail of brother uh john coltrane's uh you know saxophone the detail in this one is not there for me although like i said hearing that drums hearing the drums come from that distant, distant location in the sound stage. Sounds different, a little bit awesome. It's just not detailed. So this one uh, is my least favorite of the ones I'm about to present. Uh, coming in next is the, um, the high-res file, the 96 kilohertz, 24-bit high-res file that I downloaded from HE Tracks probably several years ago. And that one, at least the sound stage, is more like the LPs, um, in terms of the location of the musicians where you have, <clears throat> excuse me, where you have um, uh, John Coltrane primarily coming from the left speaker, uh, El, uh, Elvin Jones from the right, and McCoy Tyner and Jimmy Garrison, they're around the center of the soundstage. The, um, the high-res file matches that, um, you know, that um, three-dimensional dynamic, and it's a lot more detailed than the first CD that I uh, presented. The high-res file is more detailed, more uh, dynamic, more dimensional than this CD. However, it's not the best of the group. But you, like I said, it's more, you can more uh, discernible, discernibly uh, pick out musicians in the three-dimensional uh, space with the high-res file than that CD. Um, that CD is, like I said, the CD is very interesting. Like I said, um Elvin Jones's drums on this one is where they where they shifted the location to is very interesting uh 
and like I said, it took away the detail. But the high res file was a boost up in terms of depth dimension, sound stage detail than that CD. Up next is, and it's very close by the way, is the um, the CD inside this deluxe set this uh, that was issued in 2002. And you just hear the dynamics of the drum set better. You hear the detail of um, John Col uh, Coltrane's um, sax playing a lot better. It's more detailed. It's more dimensional. The symbol of the drums is more, you know, realistic and dynamic and, and, and dimensional. Um, it's just so much better than a high-res file, in my opinion. And the same applies to this one. The, um, this um, deluxe set and the SA CD, they're almost like tie. But keep in mind that this uh, deluxe set, the CD, CD, has the benefit of using my Luxman DAL6 DAC. Now, that's an older DAC, but it's still an amazing DAC to my ears. I still love that DAC. And the dimension that, that my DAC um, provides for this CD is amazing. This is very detailed, uh, much more detailed, in my opinion, than the uh, high-res. I shouldn't say much more. It's more detailed than the high-res file, in my opinion, this particular um, CD. And the SA CD, I'd give us the slightest edge over that uh, deluxe set because it's more, it's more dimensional in terms of echo and delay and a little bit more, you know, some of the nuances of the recording. I like the SACD better, but only by the slightest margin margin over the deluxe uh, uh, CD set. Now we're gonna get to the LPs and that's pretty interesting because when I went from the CDs to the uh, CDs to the LPs, it was like a night and day difference. Uh, the dynamics opened up, the sound stage opened up, um, Elvin Jones's drums, uh, were more detailed, there was more depth, there was more echo delay. Um, when um, John Coltrane is singing A Love Supreme on, um, let's see, it was a 33 and a third album, and how you can hear the, uh, the symbol of the drum when he's singing A Love Supreme, A Love Supreme, and how that, you can hear the sound of the symbol move towards the vocal vocalist uh, john coltrane it's a, just an amazing effect the um this um 33 and uh and a third is an amazing value in my opinion when you compare it to the um the price of uhqr i think this is a uh, close to 40 dollars or something like that somewhere in that range i believe um i think it's in that range and for the price that LP, the 33 and a third, has a lot of depth, dimension, uh, dimensionality, soundstage. You know, you hear, you can hear uh, McCoy's Tyner, McCoy Tyner's uh, piano a little bit better. I think he's in the middle of the soundstage, maybe slightly, slightly, slightly to the left of the soundstage. And Jimmy Garrison's bass is around the center of the soundstage. Then you can really discern the the. Um, the nuances and delicacies of their instruments with this LP. It's a really uh, an achievement by uh, by uh, acoustic sounds, this 33 and a third. I recommend this, by the way. If, it, if money's an issue with the $150 UHQR, and with shipping, it's probably close to $175. You can't go wrong with this one, in my opinion. Now we're going to talk about the UHQR, my opinion of this. To me, that UHQR just took everything to a different level. It took everything to a different level. You know, um, gosh, the it's almost like the symbol on um, Elvin Jones's drums. It's almost like it was singing. You know, it was... Uh, you know, the uh, the presence and the detail, the ambiance, the dimension, you know, and at times, um, like I said, when um, John Coltrane is singing in the first, uh, in the first song, when he's singing Love Supreme, you can hear that drum, the echo, delay, and decay almost go all the way past him, him singing to the, um, to the left speaker. You can discern um, the the bass 
of Jimmy Garrison a lot better. It's more, uh, it's more, it's more of a fine uh, sound to it compared to the thirty-three uh, and a third. Uh, McCoy Tyner's piano playing is more cleaner, more dimensional, more dynamic in the center of the sound stage, especially his solo on that song. Uh, I think it's called uh, Pursue. Uh, I think it's. Resolution. I think that's where he has a solo. I think it's the second song, and his playing is more, more, more dynamic and more dimensional, more realistic. Um, but I think oh, Coltrane's uh, sax playing throughout on the UH car is a lot more clear. It's, more, it's a lot more. Um, it's it's more in the room uh, than the uh, thirty three and a third. A lot of, not a lot more, but it is. It, it, on my system, I have some tall speakers, and what it does to the uh, soundstage in a small room is amazing. I must say that, though, the bass on the 33 and a third is more, it, it appears more, uh, slightly more heavier than the bass on the 45 RPM U UHQR. The 45, uh, the bass on the 45 uh, UHQR of Jimmy Garrison is is a little bit more finer and you can discern the the details and the nuances of the instruments better a little bit better than the 33 and a third where the 33 and a third the bass is to my ears even though i think it it came from the same source the bass in the 33 and a third is more a little bit more deeper where the bass on the uh uhqr is more detailed fine and defined um but I highly recommend, um, you know, if funds aren't an issue, I highly recommend this one if you're a fan of this record. Um, and it's really, when I first started listening to it, it was more of a vehicle for the drums and the drum kit of Elvin Jones. Like I said, hearing that cymbal uh, on the UHQR is almost like the cymbal was dancing and singing in a three-dimensional sound space when he was hitting that cymbal and how it would like, you know, go beyond, you know, the speakers almost to the uh, left speaker at times and maybe a little bit beyond the right speaker because um, Elvin Jones is primarily at or around the uh, right speaker. But it just it just opened up the dynamics in a huge way. And I have to say this, I, uh, last night I was listening to the, uh, the digital sources and I said to myself, I'm gonna go for the digital, digital sources directly to the UHQR. And when I did that, it was an eye opener. It was just like, um, it was almost like a, a live performance. Like I said, especially the drums, you hear brother Coltrane playing a lot more. His saxophone is a lot more clear. Uh, McCoy, like I said, McCoy Tyner's uh, solos are, um, you know, again, that's a lot more defined. And the bass, compared to these other ones, and, and the LP, the 33 and the 3rd, the, the bass on the UHQR is, is a more fine, it's more detailed, where there's a bass on the 33 and a 3rd is a little bit more bassy a little bit more on the bassy side not overly so but just a little bit but i highly recommend the um the uhqr if you're a fan of the album you know if you're not a huge fan of the album and you want this album i would just recommend getting the 33 and the third but i have i like to bring something up during this video and i do hear a difference between the 33 and the third and the 45 rpm uhqr but I pose this question to you out there in the audience. What do you think the difference is really from? Is it from the uh, the premium vinyl, the UHQR vinyl? Is it from that, the differences? Is it is a difference uh, from the 45 RPM speed versus a 33 RPM speed? Or is it both of them combined? In other words, I was wondering if they did this UHQR, I mean, if they did this 45 RPM, on a standard record, just a standard record, and sell it for like $60 or something like that. Would the sound of that $60 record at 45 RPM rival the sound of this UHQR 45 RPM?
I'm just curious. Um, and that would, and selling it at that price point of 45 RPM press on normal black vinyl would allow more people in terms from a financial point of view to participate in this marvelous recording. It really would. And I also want to bring another thing up, how this um, Love Supreme 45 RPM UHQR stacks up against the other ones I have. I don't have all of them. I'll tell you the ones I have. I have the first three issues of um, the Steely Dan, um, Pretzel Lo Logic, uh, Countdown to Ecstasy, and um, the other one, the name escapes me. I have the first, can't buy a thrill, I think. I have the first three. I have the Miles Davis of 33 and a third and 45 RPM. I have the Jimi Hendrix, I think it's the uh, Are You Experienced record. Um, I have that one. And uh, gosh, I think I have at least uh, six of them, maybe seven of them, if you include the two uh, Miles Davis's, one uh, 33 and 145. Where does this rank amongst, amongst the ones that I have? Like I say, I don't have all of them. I don't have the... Um, the Marley one, and I think there's another couple of Hendrix ones I don't have. Where does that rank? I'm going to put that at the best I've heard. Amongst the ones I have, that's the best I've heard of the UHQRs. Followed by, closely by Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. Please leave your comments in the comment section below, which is the best sounding UHQR set you have. But at the moment, this is the best sounding UHQR. Now, this gives me hope for the um, Steely Dan Asia record that's coming out as of the taping of this video. I think it's coming out in October of 2023. Because that one also is produced from a tape copy, like this one. So that gives me hope that Asia might be a fabulous one as well. We'll see, because that Asia, if you have a pressing, close to original pressing, that's an awesome record. So I can't wait to hear Asia Steely on Asia and a UHQR. But it was interesting doing these comparisons. It was very difficult, but, you know, that was uh, what I heard on my system. Like I said, these um, these comparisons will vary determine, de uh, depending on the type of uh, system you have and type of, you know, system setup you have. Your uh, system might reveal more nuances and details in mind, so you're um, results might be different from mine. That's what I hear in my system with my ears, but that would, you know, it would, uh, results will vary is what I'm trying to say, trying to say depending on your system. But please leave your comments in the comments section below. Thank you very much for viewing my video. God bless, strong love, and peace to all worldwide.